I love writing integration tests so much. So you get the speed of unit tests without the brittleness of unit tests, and you get the confidence of end-to-end -end tests without the slowness and maintenance required for end-to-end -end tests. It really is the sweet spot of testing. I talk about this more in my testing trophy video, but right now let's figure out how we can write these integration tests in a .NET application and make them amazing. So we're gonna be integration testing Streakathon. So this is a .NET Maui application. It's a streak tracker that we built on member only live streams. So for integration tests, we really wanna test the integration points of our application. So a good example of that would be this entire homepage that we have here that lists all of our streaks. So we might want an integration test that make sure all of these streaks get loaded from our API or database. And maybe another integration test that makes sure that whenever we click this add button, it takes us to the add streak form. So these are the kind of things that we want to integration test, really the high level behavior and use cases of our application at the integration points. So in terms of the code, where would this integration point be? So we talked about it being the page, in this case, the home page, and ideally it would be this home view. However, I've yet to find a .NET test runner that allows us to instantiate and interact with XAML views. So testing from the actual view or the UI, that's something that for now is probably better off left for an end-to-end -end test. And for an integration test, we're just gonna move one layer up to the home view model. So let's dive right in and get into integration testing this home view model. So the first thing we're gonna need is a test project. So in our solution, let's add a new project. We're gonna roll with NUnit here. You can really stick with whatever test runner that you prefer. I like NUnit right now. Let's name this the name of our application dot test. And then for the framework, let's match this to what our application project framework is. We're on .NET 8, so let's choose that and create this project. And now of course we want to reference our application project from our test project. So let's add a project reference here to our application project. There we go, okay. And it's actually not gonna like this. So the reason it doesn't like it is because our test project is on net 8.0 as we saw and our application project, which again is a .NET MAUI application, it only has these .NET MAUI specific target frameworks. So nothing here matches net 8.0 exactly. So we'll have to add that ourselves. So net 8.0 and there we go. All right, so now let's actually get into our tests. So we're not gonna be having any setup here. We're just messing with the placeholder unit test one file that it created. Let's rename this to the first behavior that we're gonna test. So we're gonna test the load streak behavior on that home page. So I'm gonna name this load streaks tests. There we go. And let's also rename this class, which it didn't change, to be the same as the file. And in our test, we're going to be asserting that our view model loads streaks. So, of course, we're going to be interacting with our home view model. So, we might think, let's just instantiate our home view model here. And okay, this takes a streak store. Okay. Oh, and these, this takes a get all streaks query, some kind of command, another command, and so on. Okay, we can add those, I guess. Then it takes a Firebase auth client. How do we instantiate that? So there's just a lot of things that we have to instantiate manually if we took this approach. And even worse, we'd have to make sure that all the things we instantiate are in sync with what our parent project actually uses. So that being said, we really don't want to take this manual approach, I'd say. So how can we resolve our home view model easily and make sure it matches the home view model that's really going to be used in our application? Well, if we look at our Maui application, we can see that we're leveraging dependency injection here. So we have our service collection that registers all of our services for our application, including our home view model. So what if we could reuse the service collection that we're using in our application in our tests as well? This would allow us to resolve our home view model with one line of code and make sure the home view model matches the home view model that we use in our application. So let's do it. So this service collection is just living inside of our Create Maui app. So we're gonna have to extract this a little bit so that it's reusable. So I think a good cohesive solution here would be to just put an extension method on our Maui program class called something like add streakathon, which of course is gonna extend our service collection and inside here eventually register all of our services into whatever service collection that we're calling this from. So let's just grab everything that we wanna register in this service collection. And oh, I don't actually wanna copy this logger because we're telling it to write log somewhere. So let's leave that out of this, but let's cut everything else and paste it into our add streakathon method. And then at the end of this method, we wanna 
return our configured service collection. And then from create Maui app, we just need to take our service collection and call our add streakathon method. Cool, so all we did was move our service registrations into a reusable extension method. Now we should address logging here before we move on. So I think what I wanna do is still call add serial log from inside our extension method. And then we can just pass our logger into this extension method. So it'll be something like this, where we pass the logger into add streakathon. There we go. And then we just add that as a parameter. Oh, and then finally pass that logger into add serial log. Can't forget that. Okay, so now let's use this extension method in our test. So first we're gonna need a service collection. Let's instantiate one of those. And then on the service collection, we'll simply call add streakathon. Now we do have to pass in a logger. And for something like a logger, I'd really wanna pass in just a mocked logger. So for things like that, let's use a mocking package. So we're gonna go into our test project and add a NuGet package. And we're gonna add n substitute. Here we go, let's install this, there we go. And this allows us to just pass in a mock for our logger. Let's import serial log here. All right, so service collection is configured with all of our app dependencies. So now let's take that and build our service provider. And finally, we can use that service provider to resolve our home view model. All right, so eventually I wanna do some assertion here to make sure the streak's actually loaded. So we can add that, we wanna assert that, the streak overview view models, so these are the view models representing each streak in our list on the home page. We wanna check that the count is equal to one. But we kinda of have an issue here. So if we look at how these streaks are loaded, let's dig into our home view model. It's actually through the streak store, where we call load, and that executes on this get all streaks query, which I did not name things very nicely here. But this eventually executes on this refit interface that loads our streaks from a Firestore API. But of course, for our test, we don't wanna hit a Firestore API. And this is where mocking actually does come into play with integration tests. And I did talk about mocking being bad with unit tests, but the mocking we're gonna be doing here, this is good mocking. So we're essentially just gonna be mocking our environment and the boundaries of our application. So ultimately, we wanna register a mock get all streaks query into our service collection so that we're not actually executing on this refit interface and making some sort of network request. So in our tests, we're first gonna create a mock of our refit interface via n substitute. And then we're gonna take our service collection and replace the I get all streaks query that we added as part of add streakathon. So we can see that down here, we register our I get all streaks query three refit. So we're gonna replace that existing query, which is registered as a singleton under the hood by refit. We're gonna replace that with our mock get all streaks query. Now keep in mind, this is a lot of setup that we're doing in this test. But once we get this working, we're gonna move all of this into reusable setup classes that are seamless and fun to use. All right, so the cool thing about using a mock now is that we can mock whatever we want as the response from this query. So we can mock this list of streaks that we get back. And we ultimately wanna mock that to contain one streak. So let's create that list. And then we're gonna tell our mock query that whenever it executes with any arguments, so in this case, I don't really care what the request is. Maybe for your test, you do want to assert that you're getting the expected request. But for now, let's just take anything. And when this method is called for, again, any arguments, we want to return a task that contains our list of streaks. All right, and now I'm just going to paste in the mock data for one streak here. It's a lot of code, but this is our streak represented by our Firestore document. And again, we're going to clean all of this up and make it easy to reuse between tests. And one last thing before we execute this, there is one more service that we need to mock, and that's gonna be the get all streak entries query. So let's just add that real quick, and this should be sufficient for now. We can pass in mock data later if we want to. Okay, so our test should be ready to go. So we're creating our service collection, we're adding all of our app services, we're mocking the boundaries of our application. So in this case, the API for Firestore that gives us our data. Then we build our service provider, get our home view model, and we're gonna make sure it loaded with one streak. All right, so it looks like our build is failing. And I think the reason for this, if we come over to our application CS proj file, we're gonna see our output type is an exe. And that makes sense for a .NET MAUI application, but for something that we wanna run tests against, we'd really want this to be the default of just a DLL. So overall, if we're not targeting one of these .NET MAUI frameworks, 
and we're just targeting .NET 8, then we wouldn't want our output type to be an exe. So overall, if we're targeting .NET 8.0 for our tests, then we want a DLL. But if we're targeting one of our .NET MAUI target frameworks, then we want an exe. So make sure you add this condition. All right, so now let's head into our test explorer and run this again. There we go, test successful. So with just this one test, we've tested that our service collection for our application compiles and can actually resolve our homepage. And then we've also asserted that our homepage calls this load streaks command, which loads our streaks from the streaks store, which calls our service class to load streaks and then gets our streaks from the Firestore API, parses them correctly and eventually returns them and then updates the UI represented by our streak overview of view models, which we assert on in our tests. So again, just this one test covers so much code. It gives us confidence that our application can load streaks all the way to the boundary of our application at the API layer, which means if we wanted to, we could essentially refactor everything from our home view model all the way to our API layer and simply rerun this test again to assert that our application is still working. But now let's get into cleanup mode because we have a lot of stuff that we're doing to set up this single test. And this really wouldn't be pretty to do across multiple tests. We need some sort of reusability here. So in our test project, let's create some sort of folder. We'll call this mocks and let's add a new class in here. And we'll call this something like our mock environment. So this class will be all about setting up our mock environment and giving us utilities to interact and configure our mock environment as well. So let's add a constructor here where we can do our setup. And for now, let's copy all the setup from our load streaks test. So everything up to building the service provider. And let's paste that into this mock environment constructor to import everything we need. And I think it'd be beneficial to build this from the perspective of the test that we already have. So we're gonna do something like initialize our mock environment. And then I'm gonna take this mock environment and there should be some sort of service provider property on it, which we can use to resolve our home view model. And then I would also like to add data to our mock environment in a seamless way. So perhaps on this mock environment, there'd be some sort of add streak method where we can add a streak for say user one, and then simply pass in that streak with all of the data. And that would be pretty much it. So we create our mock environment, set up our test data, get our view model, and then make sure it loaded. So let's see how this would look. So service provider property, that's pretty straightforward. We can just add a read-only property for that and then set it from our constructor. There we go, looks good. And then for adding a streak, let's just generate this method. So we'll be adding a streak for our user. And we ultimately wanna add this streak to our street collection group items, which I've already put an underscore in front of, which is hilarious because what we're gonna do here is make this a field. So let's move this up here. It can be just a private read-only field. So let's reference that down here instead. And now that this is in a field, we can interact with this field from our add streak method. So we just wanna take that field and call add. So we'll be adding a streak to that list. And let's just cut this Firestore schema that we've already initialized and paste that down here as the item that we're gonna be adding. And now we just wanna reference these parameters that get passed in. So the streak ID, the streak title, the description, and then the user ID. And let's clean this up a little bit. And awesome, there we go. So if we run this test, it succeeds, sweet. And now over time, as we add more tests, we can slowly enhance this mock environment with more functionality and more helper methods to set up our environment. All right, so that being said, before we move on, let's create one more test. So this is gonna be a killer test that asserts when we add a streak, it'll get added to our home page. So this is gonna be a very high level test that gives us a lot of confidence in our application. So let's create a new class, call this the add streak tests. All right, so I am gonna be rolling through this pretty quick because we've already gone through the details of setting up these integration tests and we have the reusable mock environment. So the way this is written should be pretty easy to follow along. So we're gonna add a test here that asserts the add streak form adds a streak to the home page. So we're gonna get our mock environment. We're gonna resolve our home view model. So this will be the starting point and starting off, we want to assert that in the beginning, the home view model has no streaks. Then we're going to resolve our add streak view model. So this is the view model representing the form to add a streak. So that being said, we're going to literally fill out this form kind of. So this is really exciting. We're kind of testing from the user's perspective. So we'll add a title 
and then a description. And then we're going to execute the command that submits the streak. So from a user perspective, this is kind of like clicking the button to submit the add streak form. And then after that, we're going to go back to our home view model and make sure it added the streak. So really cool. This is what I love about integration tests. They really resemble what the user is actually going to be doing when they use your application. All right, but before we can test this, we are going to have to enhance our mock environment. So if we look at the add streak view model, when we submit a streak, we create that streak against the streak store, which is going to execute our create streak command, which is going to hit our Firestore API represented by this refit interface. So you guessed it, we're going to have to mock this refit interface to act like it's actually created a streak. So in our mock environment, same kind of thing that we've done for other API mocks, we're going to create a substitute on that refit interface and then replace the refit interface in our service collection with the mock. And from here, we just have to configure the mock. So when this command gets executed, again, with any args, we're gonna have to handle this dynamically with a callback. So the cool thing about this callback is that we can get arguments that were passed to this command. So we'll extract the request argument. And this request type contains all of the fields for the streak that we're trying to create. And we can use those fields to create the correct response based on the streak that we wanna create. So this is essentially creating the mock response from our command. So this will involve giving our Firestore document a name containing a unique ID and then the fields on the response. So this represents the data for the created streak. It can just match the data that we passed in to create the streak. All right, so overall we're mocking our create streak command and just simulating that the streak gets created with the data that we pass in. So now back in our test, that streak will get created and should appear back in our home view model. So let's run this test. Let's just run all of them. They should all pass. Whoops, and there's one more thing that we have to mock out, and that is actually the .NET MAUI shell. So obviously that's not gonna be available for our test. Luckily I have abstracted this already to an I shell, which right now is a .NET MAUI shell. So all we have to do here is pass in a mock shell in our mock environment. So it'll be the same exact thing that we've been doing. We'll use n substitute to create our mock shell and then replace that in our service collection. All right, so let's run this again. And this time it passes. All right, so in summary, we have accomplished some beautiful integration tests. So we have very little mocking. We're really only mocking on the boundaries of our application, which makes sense. These tests run really fast, really almost as fast as a unit test. These tests give us a lot of confidence about how our application actually works and how users will interact with our application. And best of all, they don't have the slowness and flakiness of end-to-end -end tests. So obviously unit tests and end-to-end -end tests, there are still places where you'd wanna use those. I'll talk more about this in the testing trophy video, but for the most part, be sure to leverage integration tests in your own .NET application in order to have super powerful, fast tests with minimal mocking or maintenance.